Hello everyone, this is Al Fadi. Welcome back to this series about Mecca, the search for a place. And today we will continue with uh, our uh, attempt here to compare and contrast the standard Islamic narrative versus findings and facts. And one problem also that emerges when we do this is that the Arabic of the Quran appears to be a, the wrong script or a corrupted Arabic. Uh, unlike what we are taught, when I was being taught basically about the Quran and the language of the Quran, uh, there are other findings that actually contradict the standard Islamic narrative. With me here to unpack this problem is Dr. J. Dr. J, why don't you tell our viewers what's that all about? <laughs> okay, this is uh, we're, we're re zeroing in on Mecca, and we want to look at Mecca, and we want to ask the Arabic in Mecca. What do we know? What is the name of the Arabic in Mecca? Well, we're always told it's a Qurayshi based on the tribe of Quraysh where Muhammad came from. Absolutely. It's the Qurayshi dialect right. they keep on telling us. Right. The dialect of the Qurayshi. And that's why when Mudaifa was up there in Azerbaijan and they came across and they were helping out those from Iraq and right. from Syria to defeat the Azerbaijanis, when they went to the mosque on the Friday and they listened to the prayers, the prayers were in it were from the Quran and it was different verses. That's right. It's not it's not the same words. And they realized that this is not the Quran that we know. And so Mudaifa comes flying back down to Medina. He goes to with my, he says, we've got to do something. We must not have the Quran like the Christians have their That's Bible. Right. We must have just one Quran in one dialect. And so Uthman quickly got Zaid ibn Tabi to come out and to take Hafsa's copy and to rewrite the Quran in the Qureshi dialect. So the Qureshi dialect is the Meccan dialect. This is the one from Mecca. This is the one from Medina. This is the Hijazi dialect, you might want to call it. Mm -hmm. This is a specific dialect. And what did he do with all those from up in Iraq and from up in Syria? He took them all and burnt them. That's right. I mean, uh, in fact, the tradition says, if you recall, uh, in Bukhari, that he instructed the committee that whenever there's disagreement, use the Qureshi dialect to settle that matter. Qureshi dialect. Yeah. All right. Let's put a map back up on there and let's look at this map. And here we have uh, a picture of Saudi Arabia, here country. And of course, as we've been told that the Qureshi dialect, the Meccan dialect, would be in this this area right here, this um, uh rectangle, green rectangle that I have right over here. That is where the Quran was compiled. And that's where Quraysh, the tribe of Quraysh, would have been. That would be the Qurayshi tribe. So to re there's Medina, here's Mecca. It would be right here in the Hijaz, known as the central part of Western Arabia. Right. So that is where the Quran. So this Quran that I have here, the Arabic that I have here, that which you can read, this would be Qurayshi, right? And that's the understanding. Yeah. This would be Meccan. Right. This would be Hijazi. Right. And this is unique to anything that happens up here, right? That's true. That's here's what it should be. Yeah. Now, here's the difficulty. A number of years ago, Al Jalad. Jalad is. Uh, Ahmed Al Jalad, yeah. You know who he is? Yeah, well, he, he's, uh, uh, I think he's an archaeologist, but he is uh, basically doing his research and studies on inscriptions that are found in the region of Arabia, north, south, and different parts. So he's of going all over right. and he's finding these inscriptions and he's right. looking at the Arabic that's on them. That's right. And so in 2018, he published a paper or a book, I can't remember what it was, uh, and, and Mark Dury, Dr. Mark Dury, who's a good friend of yours, right. he is the one that actually uh, took this and well, made it popular all over the world in his book uh, that he came out in 2018 or 2019 where he sp spoke about the fact that th when you look at the Arabic that's in in the Quran today, the mm -hmm. Arabic, the mm -hmm. Qureshi, supposedly the Qureshi, that this is the Arabic that would have been in existence in this part of the world. Mm -hmm. What he has found is that this Arabic actually is from this part of the world. The Nabataean, basically. Nabataean Aramaic. Yeah, and he was uh, referring to w one key issue was the rhyming, basically. That was one of the keys that can point to that region. He noticed that the irab, which is the unstressed inflectional short vowels, marked with diacritics, mm -hmm. known as the irab, because they were uh, characteristic of Bedouin dialects. He noticed that, but he noticed these things, and this is, I want you to unpack each one of these as I put them up there. So let's look at the screen. He noticed that the tar marbuta. Now, what is the tar marbuta? A tar marbuta will be kind of like either if it is at the ending of a word, it will be kind of like a little curve with two dots on okay. it. I've got it right here. There it is, right there. Or if it is by itself, will be kind of like a circle with two dots on it. Okay, this is the Tar Marbuta you see all That's through right. the Quran, right? That's right. There is no Tar Marbuta down here. 
The Arabic that's down here is a totally different Arabic than it's up here. So the Tar Marbuta that we have in our Quran today, and has been in the Quran, supposedly according to the standard Islam, been narrated for 1400 years, is not found here. Mm -hmm. And if Mecca and Medina is where Muhammad was living and received the Quran, then it should not have any Tar Marbuta, number one. Number two, the Alif Maksura. What is the Alif Maksura? Well, it's kind of a swiggly line like people can see. Right, it looks like an S, doesn't it? And they call it Alif Maksura simply because it's instead of being extended, vertical, it's almost like it's broken. And the reason why it's at the end of the word. That's right. So you always put that in the end of the word when you have an Alif. That is in our Quran all the way through the Quran, is it not? Right, when you say Mata, Mata, Hatta, Ila, all of these have these uh, kind of ending. Tadmar Buddha. Al, but the uh, Tadmar Buddha is not in this part of the world. There are no Alif Maksuras or Tadmar Buddhas down here. They're all from up here. This is unique to the, the what we know as Nabataean Aramaic. Let's do one more. The definite article, the Al. That is found all through the Quran, is it not? Uh, yes, of course. I mean, uh, Al, uh, which is, by the way, the definite article. Definite right? article, the so for something. instance, my name, you know, is Abd al Fadi, meaning servant of the Redeemer. So that's the Arabic way of using the or the definite article. So the Redeemer, yeah, but only exists in this part of the world, not here. So when you say Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, you have that L in it. That could only have come from up here. That is Nabataean Aramaic, is what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Why? Because all the inscriptions up here have that. Okay. What's fascinating, and let me put this up there, the Arabic that existed in Mecca and Medina in the Hijaz is Sabaic Arabic. In the seventh century, this, which you see, this big square, red square that you see here, that's the Arabic that would have existed way up there. Yeah, let's clarify. Sabaic basically is named after the dynasty of Seba down south in the Yemen area. That's at least where they started it from, but they covered, as you can see, geographically a larger ground. It's an interesting thing, by the way, I'm not gonna reveal uh, a secret here, but the manuscript I'm working on, what you're saying is kind of like helps with the possible origin. Yeah. Of the manuscript you're working on. Right. Looks like it's from this part of the world. And you're doing this because you're looking at the script. You're looking at the Arabic right. that it's that included. Right. So this is right up your area. In fact, you're going to be the world authority on this. So we're going to wait until you get your doctor to be able to say this. Amen but fascinating that. what Dal Jalad and also what, what Dr. Mark Dury are saying. If the Quran had been written in Mecca or Medina, if they'd been written, it would be used, had used the Sabaic Arabic, which does not have the Alif Maksura or the Tarmar Buddha or the definite article. Among other features, obviously, but it seemed like the overwhelming evidence leads to north once again. Again, once to the north again. That's right. Conclusion. The Quranic Arabic, Nabataean Aramaic, existed 600 miles further north, while the 7th century Arabic of Mecca if Mecca was the place where this was, and we've been told that it was, in the Hijaz, was Sabaic, mm -hmm. would have accommodated the text of the Quran. Why? Because it already, it already used, it already used the, the diacritical marks which did not exist in the Nabataean Aramaic that, were, that created the problem right. with the Kira'ats, which is why now we have such a problem of 30 Kira'ats, because it used this kind of Arabic and not this Arabic, proving that the Quran could not have come from here at all. It's the wrong Arabic. And let's just do one more conclusion here. So, what is our remit for it? What are we going to do? What we need to do, therefore, is, and this is where we're going to now move into some of the real problems, the geographical problems with it. So what we're going to do now, we're going to, not interested in the 9th and 10th century. We're not interested in it because it's just too late and it's too far north. The traditions are all constructed by the Abbasids after 749. They definitely had an agenda, including the creation of the city of Mecca. We're only interested in the 7th and 8th century and where it all began. And that's where we need to be. But before we even do that, we need to look at who are the people that have gone before us. Who are the ones that were actually, mm -hmm. whose shoulders were, were uh, standing upon? Because we didn't do this work to begin with, folks. This that's has right. all been done long before. So in the next episode, I want to give credit to those people. And then I want to give credit to the people who are working with us. They yeah. are people that are helping us out. And I, amen to that. And I want to make sure people know that we, Dr. J uh, and his team, are unearthing information that is super helpful when it comes to this kind of these kind of discoveries but they are scattered in books articles different documents 
And between his team and myself and my platform, we wanna bring these things to the forefront and he's doing the same thing in his own channel. That's what we mean by the players. We're collecting the data, we're presenting it to you in one series to make it easy for you to go to these series, watch the sources, then go and investigate it for yourself. I mean, we're giving you the sources, we're not hiding it from you, and next episode, we'll deal with that as well. Thank you so much as always, brother. It's exciting. It's always exciting for me, even when I'm doing this with you, because there's always something that prompts me to think about something that I experienced in the past, and I say, now it makes sense. Now it makes sense. Now it's starting, the picture's starting to fit together. Thank you everyone for watching. Hopefully you're enjoying this series. Share it with others as well. Keep your comments coming and your questions as well. This is Alfadi. God bless you. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Sierra International, and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.